The project of the century, the transcontinental transport corridor and the new integration format, the United Eurasian Economic Space, results of the 8th Astana Economic Forum. What is an exemplary public service and what does one expect from a government official? Kazakhstan is modernizing its state apparatus. Getting closer to Europe, President Nazarbayev met with the Prime Ministers of Lithuania and Luxembourg in Accorda. IMF forecasts stasis for the economies in Central Asia and the Caucasus. Kazakhstan makes counter-arguments. Night at the museum among animated exhibits and priceless rarities. 23,000 visitors use the opportunity to discover country's history. Good evening, I'm Rahim Ashakbaev and this is Kazakhstan Weekly, where we summarize the major local and international news for the past week. Our tonight's guest is a known public figure, Adil Ahmetov, Mr. Ahmetov, I'm glad to see Good you evening. again. The main event we will speak about today is the Astana Economic Forum. The world's leading politicians, economists, scientists and experts gathered for the eighth time in the Kazakh capital. Nowadays, it's hard to separate politics and economy on the global scale, and therefore speakers mentioned the political aspects many times while discussing economic issues. The president of Kazakhstan hasn't changed his tradition and proposed a number of new initiatives. The most discussed one was the creation of the joint Eurasian economic space. The Kazakh president shared his views on how to build a stable economy at the Astana Economic Forum. Nazarbayev believes that the most important thing is to be one step ahead of the approaching recession and now is the right time. The world has not yet overcome old problems as the new ones emerged already. The collapse of the former system of checks and balances on a global scale, the loss of trust between state leaders and the corrosion of international law are the main challenges. Environmental threats and the food crisis exacerbate the difficult situation. Given these challenges, Kazakhstan has developed a detailed plan of preventive measures. The plan is called 100 Concrete Steps. President Nazarbayev has voiced some of its paragraphs. The announcement of the ambitious plan has initiated heavy discussions at the forum. As it turned out, the capital of Kazakhstan could get the status of a global economic center. The president has even signed a corresponding decree. The experience of the United Arab Emirates was taken as the base. Talks with the representatives of the Dubai International Financial Center on the details of the future cooperation have already been conducted. An independent judiciary with a separate jurisdiction operating on the principles of the English law will ensure independence of the financial center. The judiciary will consist of foreign experts. It is also planned to establish an offshore financial market. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev said that in the future, the financial center of Astana can become a hub for the entire Central Asian region. Almaty will preserve its status of the financial center on a national scale. Another proposed global initiative was the creation of the new high-speed transport route, Eurasian Transcontinental Corridor. It will pass through the territory of Kazakhstan and will provide a free transit of goods from Asia to Europe and back. Kazakhstan, located in the heart of the Silk Road, and the countries that will use the route for the transportation of goods and cargo, therefore, will receive economic benefits from such a project. President Nazarbayev has confirmed once again his commitment to integration. He has proposed to establish a united Eurasian economic space, which will apply common rules of trade and transit of goods and resources, taking into account the national interest of participating countries. In addition, the permanent dialogue platform that will coordinate all contentious issues is supposed to be launched as part of the project. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev believes that the Astana Economic Forum will be the right tool to tackle the issue. So, Mr. Ahmedov, uh, could you please comment on the output of the forum and what do you think about the new initiative of the president? First of all, we should underline that uh, Astana Economic Forum has become already usual business because this forum is uh, already uh, is being held for the eighth time. And uh, Kazakhstan has accumulated a lot of experience in uh, holding, in facilitating this kind of fora. And uh, this, fora, uh, this forum was not, uh, is not uh, an exclusion. And a lot of uh, businessmen, politicians, among them two prime ministers from European countries and uh, some uh, uh, Nobel Prize owners also participated. And uh, a lot of uh, contracts have been signed. And uh, uh, this kind of forum, uh, for example, uh, is its target is to bring in as much uh, investment as possible. And uh, this forum is not exclusion. By the way, uh, I also participated 
and the Turkic Academy in conjunction with the lower chamber of uh, the parliament. Uh, we, um, our session was devoted to the Caspian Transit Corridor and uh, there was not a single vacant place in the hall where we had this session and a lot of uh, uh, people came from Turkey, business people, politicians and a lot of deputies of the parliament were uh, also there and uh, discussion was very heated I, I would say. And the keynote speaker was again our president. For example, today in the plenary session, he made a very, very strong speech, I would say. And he referred to, main, to the main challenges of the contemporary uh, time. For example, uh, terrorism and uh, uh, the lack of trust between the leaders of the nations, for example. Of course, he didn't say uh, anybody, uh, he didn't name uh, any country, but we understand. Uh, for example, now, uh, I if you compare, for example, the situation, international situation uh, of today's and of five years back, uh, eight years back, absolutely different uh, situation. Uh, there is no trust between the countries. Telling the truth, for example, take, uh, for example, Ukraine and uh, the situation, the uh, relationship between the U US and the Russia, and uh, a lot of trust has been lost. And uh, um, there is big challenge, for example. All these uh, things uh, have great impact on the economic development and the political development in the whole world. And our president uh, has just accumulated all these things and uh, 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 reminded that uh, we should overcome all these difficulties. Mm -hmm. difficulties. And besides that, um, during uh, this economic forum also, a lot of contracts have been signed. And uh, within the framework of this economic forum, uh, our president uh, received two prime ministers of European countries, Lithuania and uh, Luxembourg. And of course, uh, those countries are keenly interested in doing business with Kazakhstan, in free trade with Kazakhstan, and in developing uh, stable and reliable uh, contacts. And of course, they are interested in Kazakhstan, and Kazakhstan is reciprocally interested in doing business with those countries. Besides that, um, uh, a train, uh, joint train is being launched, uh, named Saule, which will carry, uh, for example, goods for uh, uh, exhibition 2017. And a lot of materials will be carried, will be brought by that train. On the other hand, uh, Luxembourg is a very uh, key, though it's a minute country in, the, in Europe, mm -hmm. its role is very big because uh, Luxembourg will facilitate ties uh, between uh, European countries and Kazakhstan because Kazakhstan has already renewed its agreement with the European Union, as you know, and this happened. And on the, hand, on the other hand, for example, do you remember um, in 2010 we launched a very interesting uh, uh, program uh, the path to Europe because uh, Kazakhstan is keenly interested uh, in bringing in uh, European standards in every field, in the field of education, in the field of medicine, healthcare, in the field of industry and so on and so forth. And these things are continuing. Mm -hmm. From this point of view, uh, all those meetings are very fruitful. Let's talk about the bilateral uh, relations with you a little bit later. Mm. Can you tell me about the uh, impression uh, of the foreign experts, politicians, economists on the uh, speech of the president and the 100 steps, his program of implementation of institutional reforms? As you remember, when the uh, when inauguration of the president uh, was held, for example, in the Independence Palace, I, uh, I was present and you were present, and uh, the president uh, uh, just declared about those hundred steps and uh, he also named five reforms among them uh, is uh, I, I would say the most important is the infra infrastructure development by the way infrastructure development is the driving force of the uh, of the economy and from this point of view for example all the regions of Kazakhstan are developing very equally 
and a lot of money is allo allocated to regions. And uh, on the other hand, uh, this uh, the next five year um, plan of uh, intensifying uh, intensified industrial programs are taking care uh, are taking care uh, taken care of, and uh, different areas of Kazakhstan are coming up. A lot of jobs are being created. You see. In spite of the fact that oil price has uh, become uh, much less than it used to be, but we should again underline that Kazakhstan survived when uh, a barrel cost, for example, $10, mm -hmm. but now it's uh, $55. That's why, on the other hand, during these uh, difficult years, for example, Kazakhstan has, during those good years, Kazakhstan has accumulated a lot of fund national fund and uh, some parts of national fund uh, are being used uh, just to keep the situation as normal in these for example uh, d difficult uh, situation Kazakhstan has increased the uh, salaries of uh, civil uh, service area you see mm -hmm. and pensions are taken care of and uh, people just feel at home I would say the well-being uh, has not for example has not been damaged too much. One of the main discussions at the Astana Economic Forum was the image of civil servants and effectiveness of the public administration issues. Among the distinguished guests at the forum was team leader of the EU-funded project Civil Service Reform and Modernization of the Government of Kazakhstan, Dr. George Mirianis. Of course, we couldn't miss this chance and invited Mr. Mirianis to our studio. Good evening. Good evening and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the accepting our invitation. We know that you specialize in matters of state governance and therefore you are certainly aware of trends in the development of civil service in Kazakhstan. Before we discuss it, let's take a look at a short video about the basic stages of formation of the professional state apparatus in Kazakhstan. Once Kazakhstan gained independence, it faced the need to create its own effective state apparatus. At that time, the country took as foundation the most advanced experience of the world's developed countries. Kazakhstan was a pioneer in the post-Soviet territories. The country introduced the first public contest to the state services and was the first which divided political and administrative positions. The strategy Kazakhstan 2030 adopted in 1997 largely defined by the vector of further development of the civil service. The fundamental principles were laid at that time the improvement of recruitment, training and promotion of the personnel, the orientation of serving the people in the civil service and finally maintaining the high reputation of the civil servants. The profiled agency was created in 1998 and the summer of the next year a law on civil service was adopted. A number of regulations and legislative acts governing the work of the state apparatus were received in subsequent years. By the time dictated the need for new reforms and in 2011 a new concept model for public services was adopted. Among the major innovations, a clearer separation of the structures, the body of political and administrative civil servants was formed, the latter in turn divided into body A, management, and body B, execution. In addition, a two-stage competitive selection for vacant positions was introduced as well. The first stage enrollment in the reserve and only then the applicant could apply for the coveted position. 2013 was the time for the next reform. First and most important thing was a legislative barrier to relocation of administrative employees when changing heads of departments. An institution of observers and experts was introduced to improve the transparency and objectivity of staff selection. And in recent times, new changes were initiated. A three-stage competitive selection process with the expansion of the powers of the Agency for Civil Services, the introduction of a new payment system taking into account the real effectiveness of the work, the mandatory provision of housing, the regular training period and access to public office for foreign experts and representatives of the private sector was fixed by law. At the same time, the responsibility of public managers is expanding. The qualifications are enhanced and a new code of ethics is being implemented. Also, a state corporation government for citizens is being established now based on the model of Canada Service and Centrelink in Australia. The emphasis is still made on the professionalization of the entire system of public service, that is, the preparation of competent and efficient public managers. This question is fundamental for the implementation of the plan of the nation, recently voiced by President Nazarbayev. So, Dr. Mirianis, uh, in your opinion, uh, Kazakhstan's civil service system is up to date with the global trends in this sphere. To what extent? 
Uh, I would like to thank you for your questions. So, and that allow, allow me to say a few words before uh, responding. So, as you said, I am the team leader of a project in Kazakhstan, supporting uh, the governmental efforts on to, to reform civil services. So, I'm saying that to explain that we started together with the government about three years ago the efforts to modernize the civil service, taking into consideration and using the most uh, modern and the most efficient uh, samples from all over the world, not only EU, but about 15 to 20 countries. So that allows me to say that the current status of civil service in Kazakhstan is in conformity with the most advanced European and non-European standards. Mm -hmm. And are there any issues in Kazakhstan's civil service system? Uh, the system of civil service in Kazakhstan uh, is using mainly the global trends. Uh, the global trends means uh, efficiency, human resources management, human resources development, and continuous and lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. And this is what they are trying to, de to develop. They started already up they upgrading the trade and they continue. Mm -hmm. And what uh, are the main challenges you see to, to modernize the civil service? The ch challenges is, first of all, that uh, it is not enough to modernize the legal and regulatory framework of civil service. You should convince the society to support you, because the best legislation on civil service, it is not enough if the society is not aware and if the society will not try to support the changes. Mm -hmm. And that is also close to the efforts of the government to increase transparency and to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption is uh, a concept. The case is that the, gov the society should understand and should be educated that corruption is equally bad than any other crime. So corrupt, uh, we are all humans, but the fight against corruption should start from the family, from the society, and then to pass to the legislation in order for the civil servants to understand and to support. So mm -hmm. in parallel of training and retraining and uh, educating civil servants on anti-corruption issues, we have also to educate the society if we'd like to mm -hmm. succeed. And how you can access, uh, assess uh, the effectiveness of public service in Kazakhstan comparing with other CIS countries and maybe EU countries, uh, for example, Greece? Uh, I believe that uh, the upgrading of the skills of the civil servants are already advanced enough. We are using not only standards of EU uh, most uh, successful civil services, for instance, the French system, the UK system, German system, uh, Nordic country system, but also we are working together with the most prestigious universities abroad, Oxford University, Cambridge University, Potsdam University in Germany, etc., in order to have the opportunity to work together with our counterparts towards to uh, dual master degree, dual research, in order to have well-educated and trained civil servants. Mm -hmm. We started this effort three years ago. The first results of the, the, the efforts are already appeared. We have already some uh, civil servants already familiar with the training system in the, those universities. We have university professors uh, visiting Kazakhstan, and we have a very successful, I should say, collaboration. Mm -hmm. And one of the direction of the uh, further refor reformation of the public service is to increase salary for public servants and uh, to decrease the inequality uh, between the private sector and the public sector. How you can comment on that? I could say that uh, we should uh, increase uh, the, the motives mm -hmm. and uh, decrease the counter motives. Why, why I'm saying that? Of course, uh, to increase the salary of civil servant is very important, but it is not enough. Uh, they are saying that uh, increase of salary makes people live, not stay. If it, this, is, uh, this increasing is not in a combination of some motives for the civil servants to understand the key role that they have to play, 
and to serve the society, then we will fail. So we should establish, and we started to establish and continue, a lot of motives. Mm -hmm. Could be financial motives, could be moral motives, could be a lot of other motives. And in order for them to feel that they're really servants to the society mm -hmm. and to be rewarded for that, not only through money. Mm -hmm. But of course, money is important, an important factor. Mm -hmm. And I would like to address the same question to Mr. Akhmetov. How do you assess the effectiveness of the public service in Kazakhstan comparing with other countries? Civil service area is one of the serious areas uh, to which our president pays uh, very um, serious attention. Because a civil a servant serv service and civil servants, as my friend has just mentioned, uh, requires uh, transparency and uh, here uh, servants should be with clean mind see and uh, if the mind is clean the person is not corrupt if the mind is dirty corruption is there that's why first of all we should uh, take care of these things okay. we should prevent corruption that's why uh, salary is very important but on the other hand, honesty should come from the, from the grassroots, you see, and uh, from schools, kindergartens, in the family, in the society, in the university, everywhere. This atmosphere should be everywhere. Otherwise, it's very difficult to overcome these difficulties. But in spite of uh, these difficulties, our president proposed uh, these five reforms and uh, one of the main reforms is uh, uh, attached to this area, uh, civil service area. Thank you very much for your interesting comments uh, and taking time to come to our studio. Like any other event of this level, the Stan Economic Forum, in addition to the breakout sessions and discussions, was followed by a number of bilateral meetings and negotiations. The President of Kazakhstan met with the premiers of two European countries, Luxembourg and Lithuania, who arrived in Astana. The Kazakhstan-EU cooperation and topical aspects of bilateral relations were discussed according to the Akordas press service. Mr. Sultan Azarbayev met with Lithuanian Prime Minister Algirdas Butkevichius. He arrived in Astana to participate in the 8th Astana Economic Forum. The sides discussed bilateral cooperation including trade, economic and investment spheres. In particular, they discussed the possibility of declaring the container train Saule to be the official carrier of the Expo 2017 exhibition. The Lithuanian Prime Minister said that the train could carry the equipment for the show and also the necessary materials for the pavilions. In his turn, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev invited the Lithuanian specialists in the construction and road infrastructure to participate in the Kazakhstani projects and stressed the high value of their experience. During the visit, the sides signed documents on mutual protection of classified information, a joint action to prevent the legalization of monetary funds obtained illegally, and financing of terrorism, and on cooperation in the field of veterinary medicine. Butkovichus also underlined that Lithuania supports the strengthening of relations between Kazakhstan and the EU and hopes that an agreement on expanding cooperation will be signed in the near future. The talks about the deepening of relations between Kazakhstan and the EU continue during the meetings of President Nazarbayev and the Prime Minister of Luxembourg. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev and Javier Betel considered the prospects of strengthening cooperation between the two countries. As noted by President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, Kazakhstan counts on the support of Luxembourg to address some issues of interaction with the EU, in particular visa facilitation process and the removal of restrictions in the future of aviation. So, Mr. Ahmedov, what spheres of cooperation does the agreement between Kazakhstan and the EU include? First of all, most uh, important areas are just free trade, uh, economy and investment. These are three main areas. Besides that, uh, very many other areas. As I have already mentioned that uh, Kazakhstan is keenly interested in bringing in, for example, technology, transfer of technology from Europe, trans uh, transfer of knowledge, transfer of uh, science, for example, research uh, in the science area, research area, in the education area, in healthcare area, in agricultural area, in very many areas, and in uh, also financial area also. That's why uh, 
Those countries are also interested in doing business in Kazakhstan, with Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan uh, has a lot of resources, as you know. But uh, at the same time, uh, now, we are not depending only on oil and gas. We are developing our in industrial sector. And a lot of new factories and plants are being created. A lot of new jobs are being created. And Kazakhstan is paying much attention to infrastructure. For example, uh, our president just recently received uh, the president of uh, Kazakhstan, Temur Jolo, and um, roads are um, paid um, too much attention. I would say it, it is very serious. Roads from Astana to all parts of Kazakhstan, not only uh, uh, roads, but railroads, also airlines, you see? And uh, besides that, Kazakhstan, uh, during these last years, we created, we built uh, a lot of uh, new uh, railway routes. For example, Jezengzan, we know, and uh, it uh, connects China with uh, Europe. And not only with Europe, but also if uh, China and very many other countries, for example, are interested uh, in doing business with Turkmenistan, uh, let's say with Iran or Persian Gulf countries, there is uh, a route already. And uh, Iran is keenly interested uh, in doing business, taking advantage of this route, you see. Besides that, yesterday we discussed, for example, uh, at the uh, Astana Economic Forum, uh, the Caspian Transit uh, 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 project, Traseka project also, through Caucasus. And uh, by the way, we have initiated our uh, academy, Turkic Academy, uh, in conjunction with the uh, uh, lower chamber of the parliament and uh, a lot of things uh, were discussed. I think uh, uh, from year to year the mm, achievements of uh, Astana Economic Forum is very uh, getting grow growing bigger and bigger and that's why very many people come from different areas for example, those two prime ministers, they are interested in doing business not only with Kazakhstan, because this is a dialogue platform. They can meet other uh, partners, for example, who come from Turkey, from uh, very many other countries, from China, from European countries, from uh, Central Asian countries, uh, from Japan, from Korea. And uh, this is a big platform for dialogue. And, uh, to attract uh, investment from all those sources. Because here they meet, uh, business people especially are very interested in uh, uh, participating in this forum. You can find new partners, new investments, new technologies, very many things. That's why from this point of view, Asana Forum deserves big prize. International Monetary Fund experts think that Central Asian and Caucasian countries will continue experiencing further economic stagnation and increase of inflation. The IMF voiced such objective reasons as hydrocarbons prices are tumbling and the Russian economic development continues its struggle. The head of the National Bank of Kazakhstan, however, doesn't agree with the IMF experts' opinion. He thinks that the government controls the situation and is taking all the necessary measures to contract the external influence. Karat Kilimbetov has announced the minimal oil prices that would keep Kazakhstan afloat and in a positive trend, 55 US dollars per barrel. In the face of declining commodity prices and stagnation in Russian economy, the IMF lowered its forecast for GDP growth in the Caucasus and Central Asia for 2015 by 2% to 3.2%. The report on prospects of regions development was presented in Almaty on Tuesday. International analysts advised to carry out structural reforms to perform the business climate and optimize public administration in order to overcome the negative trends. The IMF representatives also advised to consolidate budgetary relations and pursue a more flexible national currency policy. The head of the National Bank of Kazakhstan does not share pessimistic forecasts regarding prospects of domestic economy. According to him, the current situation in the energy market makes it possible to solve all the current investment issues without reducing gold and foreign exchange reserves and assets of the national fund. 
At the moment, Kazakhstan's international reserves amounted to about 100 billion U.S. dollars. At the same time, the head of the National Bank agreed that this is the good time for qualitative reforms, in particular moving from fixed to a floating 10-year rate system in the medium term. For now, the regulator's main task is to ensure price stability and control of inflation. When it comes to monetary policy, it would be useful to use fiscal stimulus to support the economy in the short term. The country will have financing and buffer for growth. Most countries in the region have engaged in it, such as Kazakhstan. The idea now is to switch, and many countries have already switched to inflation targeting. Both the government and the National Bank are clearly focused on the serious reforms that have matured in many sectors of the economy. So, Mr. Ahmedov, what data does the IMF base the analytical estimation on? First of all, I would like to say that I am on Kelimbetov's side mm -hmm. because he knows the economy of Kazakhstan very well. He's a very nice manager, very experienced manager. As for IMF, IMF is also uh, suffering. IMF has become very weak. As an institution? Yes, as an institution. You ca if you compare IMF of today with the IMF of 20 years or uh, 50 years back, you see? Mm -hmm. Kazakhstan uh, wouldn't uh, suffer too much because uh, our internal policy and external policy uh, are very strong. And we do business with the whole world. The Golden Man and the Saka Queen came to life at the National Museum in Astana. The country's main museum for the first time hosted the international event Night of Museums. Astana residents and guests of the capital has the chance to witness the free of charge exhibitions and theoretical tours. Watched videos about the priceless exhibits and historical artifacts stored at the National Museum. Let's see how it went. About 14,000 exhibits were presented to visitors. There were about 160,000 exhibits in the past, vaults of secrets and mysteries. The National Museum is one of the largest museums in Central Asia today. Its area is 74,000 square meters. The complex consists of seven themed rooms, restoration workshops, laboratories and libraries. The night at the museum took place around the world and was dedicated to the International Museum Day. German museums were the first ones to open at night back in 1997. In 2005, the French museums also put forward the idea of holding the annual international event, and in 2006, more than 2,000 museums in 38 countries participated in the project. In Kazakhstan, the first event was held in 2006 in the Central State Museum. According to Kazan 4 Media Agency, on the night from May 18 to 19, the repository of secrets and mysteries of the past was attended by over 23,000 people. Some are interested in the reconstruction of prehistoric human life, some in theatrical production of the legend of the golden man, some in a lecture about the mounds and stories about barrel horses. All epochs are presented in our museum, starting with prehistoric era, Sarmatian, Kipchak, Hun warrior, medieval knights, butters of the 15th, 16th and the 17th centuries, the medieval image of the bride and Khan. So, Mr. Ahmetov, we see that a lot of people attended the night at the National Museum. How you can explain this phenomenon? This phenomenon is not new, for example, especially in the Western countries, in Germany, in France, and in very many other countries. It's a usual practice. And uh, this practice has uh, come to Kazakhstan. And uh, on the other hand, uh, in Astana, uh, we have constructed a very, very beautiful mm, museum uh, which is very big I would say it contains a lot of artifacts it contains uh, different departments archaeological ethnographic historical and so on and so forth and of course it's a brand new museum museum and those people who uh, visited the museum at night they enjoyed a lot and uh, they saw a lot of uh, uh, things, new things, historical things, and very many other things. And uh, uh, the visitor's opinion of the museum is very high. And uh, I'm quite sure, because I, I was in that museum, not once, several times. And uh, it, is, it, it is very impressive. It impressed me. 
And uh, of course, if you compare this museum with the uh, uh, state museum in Almaty, Almaty museum is of course also very uh, rich museum. And uh, why I say again, I brought there a delegation from the uh, uh, Turkic speaking uh, uh, states corporation members and uh, they were very impressed and uh, they praised that. Besides that, that museum uh, has become a scientific research center. Really? Yes. And uh, the, uh, the mm, museum, and I mean the scientists of the museum, uh, has published, have published five volume encyclopedia of ethnog ethnographic categories and uh, taboos uh, and uh, uh, ethnographic taboos and uh, very many other traditional categories. Very, very interesting book. Five volumes, you see. They have just completed and they are working on the sixth volume already. That's why this museum will become richer from year to year because it depends on time. Because Astana is a very young capital in the world, I would say. And uh, this museum is also young. But next century, this, will mu <laughs> this museum, museum will be absolutely different. Will become richer, much richer. Thank you very much, Mr. Akhmetov. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week in our program again. Thank you. Finally, here is a brief preview of the events of the coming week. On Monday, May 25, the World Summit of the Information Society will kick off in Geneva. The CIS heads meeting will be held in Burabai, the Akmala region, on May 29. In addition, the memory of victims of political repressions will be commemorated in Kazakhstan on Sunday, May 31. We will discuss this and other important events in our next program. Thank you for watching. Best of luck and goodbye.